let's talk about the UK, how fucking mad it is and how upside down it is. And we speak about this stuff quite frequent. You know what happened to me a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's in a it's in a weird state. And listen, I'm in Scotland. There's a lot of beauty in Scotland. You were in Scotland with me a few weeks ago. You see the peace, you see the tranquility, Loch Lomond, the beautifulness of it. But England, Ireland, uh, you see the madness that's happening, the stuff that Tommy Robinson, who's a really good friend of yours, we're actually in Spain just now with Tommy doing podcasts. But yeah, there's some mad stuff. What do you think the state of the UK is the now? I think the state of the UK is beyond repair. And under this Labour government, it's only going one way, and that's south. Until, until that maniac Starmer is no longer in number 10, we are in serious, serious trouble. He's lied to everybody in his manifesto. He acted disproportionately during the civil unrest. He's now bringing in blasphemy laws, sending people to jail for essentially asking who their God is. I won't say it word for word because I could end up in jail. And this is where, this is where the UK is at. Suppression, division, invasion, and it's all orchestrated. Do you know how easy it would be for the Navy to step in and stop the illegal invasion that's happening in the UK. It's what they're built and trained to do. It would be so simple to stop them or if they catching them and just return them to Calais. I mean, I think Donald Trump is now saying you get, if he, if he gets voted in, you get one opportunity to invade our country illegally with no paperwork, completely unfettered. God knows what you've done in the past. We'll put that down as a misdemeanor, send you back. Should you, try and illegally gain entry to our country again, you're going to get a hefty prison sentence. There's a bit of a, so there could, there could potentially be a deterrent because normally what happens in the States, it spills into the UK. But in the UK at the moment, for me, I think it's just a completely, there's just unnecessary procedures put in place. And I think it's now good versus evil. I think, because I'm, I've always been center of the fence. I've always sat on the fence because I can see things that when we, we said this earlier on, I like to get both sides of the story, but I speak to enough people. I see enough things to know right from wrong and good from bad and which direction my moral compass is in. And, you know, the biggest bone of contention at the moment is illegal migration. And everybody that comes on my podcast without foul, they're not on there. They're not on there to talk about politics in the country, but they can't help it at the moment. Every single guest I've had on in the last, in the last hundred days since Labour coming to government, every single one of them has got something to say about the state of the UK, and to see to see our veterans, our heroes, our people that were sent as cannon fodder into other countries to fight wars, and who knows what the fuck for? None of us really know, and then they fight for their country sent to war by our country and then when they're chewed up and spat out they're left to fucking rot by our country and when i say by our country i'm talking about our judas government because that's what they are they're not putting their own people first which is fucking sinful and shameful and i don't like the country anymore and i've always been very patriotic and i will still keep standing up and fighting for it the best I can, but you can't expect, and we come on to the working class because it's the working class, I believe, that are being completely neglected and thrown under the bus. They're not being heard, they're not being listened to. How on earth can you be spending north of eight million pound a day housing illegal migrants in hotels and military camps, and yet we've got veterans sleeping on the street on the side of the road, being rained on, sitting there in a the howling fucking wind with nothing but a wet, soggy sleeping bag. And we've got illegal migrants coming into the country. And when people, these idiots on X, formerly known as Twitter, their only argument to anyone that's anti-migration is, well, you're clearly racist. And it's like, no, 
We've got enough scumbags of our own. You see, if my dad was coming from fucking Afghanistan, creeping through different countries to get here, I wouldn't want him coming here either. I'd want that dog stopped at fucking Calais. Stop there. You're not coming into the UK. This is a civilized country. And if you want to come in, there needs to be an exchange of value. I need to see your worth. I need to see your previous fucking work in history. I need an, en an enhanced DBS check on you to know that you are not a violent criminal or a sexual predator or a national threat to our security. You're not a fucking terrorist. We don't know who these people are. How in God's name are we not allowed to talk about that? but they want to suppress our views and they want to put the fear of God into us so that we don't speak out about this so they can keep sweeping these atrocities under the carpet. The government, the deep state, they're all complicit in a very fucking sinister, a very sinister fucking long-term act. L Labour have just, what have they done? Invested 500 million in migration process centers for the next eight years. You said in your fucking manifesto that you're going to put a stop to illegal migration. Now you're going to spend the next eight years processing them. It's dark, it's sinister, and because there's so much divide, because there's so much distraction, they all want us to be distracted. So skint that you can't really get involved in any kind of mass movement because you can't afford to be there because you need to be at work to pay the bills, which you can just about cover for now. He looks like he could be raising capital gains to just south of 40%. What independents are going to want to invest in the UK? It's a dangerous place to live. I don't recognise it anymore. London has got a horrendous feel to it. And we can't keep allowing people that are unfettered into the country because if we don't know about you we don't know what you're capable of doing or where you're going to go or what your intentions are for all we know these thousands of military age men that are crossing the border being greeted with a phone and accommodation because we don't know anything about them they could all be networking amongst themselves they could all be plotting here, there and everywhere around the country, waiting to make their move. Yeah, it's fucking scary. And like I say, just for a concerned far, it doesn't matter what colour you are, what religion you follow. If you're coming over here without papers, without passport, without having the right kind of things to look into who you are, then by all means you shouldn't be here. Do you know what I'm saying? You're not racist or far right because you think that. That's everyone who thinks that. By all means, if you're coming from a war-stricken fucking place, because of the damage America and the UK has done to other countries. If you're a refugee and bringing your family and your kids, by all means, come for a great life. Um, all four people want to have a better life. But when it comes to young kids, no passports, don't know their background checks, don't know their criminal record, and coming here, then there's got to be question marks of how do you make it possible where you've got to check these people instead of everybody just coming in for a fucking free-for-all. But hopefully things do change and uh, right now, man, we've just got to keep strong, kind of keep head above water. I'll be surprised if it changes any time soon because it would be so simple. You stop the boats and you stop the benefits. If there's no incentive for people without paperwork to come here, they won't come here. We're being, we're being hospitable to people we know nothing about and we're being despicable to the people that we should care about that have cared about us. People that are paying into the system their entire lives, having their winter fuel allowance slashed. That person's worked their entire life paying their tax and you're slashing their winter allowance, their fuel allowance, but yet you're spending all this money housing illegal migrants. How does that make sense? How is it fair? How are we supposed to love a country that doesn't love us? And the two-tier policing that's going on, is off the chart. It's, an, it's another bone of contention for a lot of people that are now awake in, in the UK. Look what happened at Manchester Airport. Manchester Airport, armed police officers in the airport, which is a very tense place anyway, with previous events that have taken place. Police officers got attacked, smashed to pieces. 
And if you've only seen the ending of the video where the police officer kicks the guy in the face on the floor, you need to do a bit more research and watch what happened before that. A woman police officer got her nose broken. Not one arrest because they have a different culture to ours, because they're considered a minority. The police, the police haven't learned from Rotherham and Telford where children were systematically raped and abused. They haven't learned that keeping quiet doesn't help. It just makes the problem worse. It amplifies it and it leads to more devastation and childhood trauma and ongoing mental health issues, which then makes them reliant on the state because they're so cooked they can't get a job. They need their benefits. And then the government can go, there's just, there's enough for you to get by, but do come back and do behave. And we will be keeping an eye on you. And it won't be long until you're chipped and we'll know your every movement. And then there'll be restrictions put in place. If you start connecting the dots, you can be called a conspiracy theorist, or you can just think this is a purposeful orchestrated thing that's taking place and only the people way above government really know what's going on i believe and i think there's a lot of police officers out there that will be handing in their notice now there'll be a lot of potential soldiers that would be great for the country that won't be applying to fight for the country anymore our military is going to weaken and soften and dampen tiktoker weakening the minds of our children by pumping them full of crap yet they're putting their own people because you know it's a china-based uh, app, they're pumping their kids full of information, intellectual property, stuff that's going to really amplify their minds and ignite their brain. We're getting silly dance videos and fucking, you know, clowns doing handstands and just silly pranks. There's a big, big, there's something going on here and it ain't great. And for, the, for them people in Manchester to still not be arrested for beating up police officers on camera, breaking a female police officer's nose, and then they're sending people to jail very quick for Facebook posts and retweets. So that's just not freedom of speech gone. That's now freedom of thought. Because some of those people that were jailed, they weren't inciting anything. They were just expressing how they felt. I mean, I'm not going to quote it word for word, but people have been jailed for tweets for saying words to the effect of, I don't care anymore if my tent gets blown away in the wind. I'm sick to death of that tent. I'd no longer care. They're obviously using different examples, but that's not me inciting you to get a fucking windblower and get rid of my tent. I'm just saying I don't care if my tent blows away. And so where people are airing their views and opinions and the police are storming in and arresting them, fast tracking them to court, why are they all pleading guilty? They're obviously being forced and certainly heavily encouraged to do so. The fear of God putting them, if you don't, your sentence will be tripled perhaps. And then they're in court on the Monday and then they're straight to jail for writing something on a social media platform. We are still living in the hangover of the civil unrest, the riots. They weren't race riots for starters. They was coined race riots and then Farage riots. They, they were none of them. They were concerned parents riots. They were invisible people riots. They were people that have been dismissed and ignored for years. They were the people that took to the streets that were furious because there was a pressure cooker. And you cut off a man's tongue it's going gonna, it's gonna to result in violence every single time. If you can't express yourself with words, the only other way is through physicality. But those riots, you cannot let the government put the fear of God in you so you no longer speak out about your fears and concerns and worries. You, can no, you can't let them not let you stand in the street and protest peacefully, but it is moronic. And you need to really, really check yourself. You cannot be inciting violence. You simply can't. There's other ways of dealing with it and you're going to play right into, into the government's hands. You cannot be throwing bricks at police officers. Come on. You're better than that and it's mindless and it's only going to end one way. 
You prove them right, you go to jail, your family suffer. We now know that Keir Starmer shows no mercy. If he can pin something on you because he thinks you're the right-hand side of politics, he will do so. So anybody that wants to make a change, because it's all about making the change. We all want peace and harmony. I'm sure when the country is completely settled, migration, legal migration, will be welcomed again. We like different cultures. We like different people. We like different foods. We like different ideas, different perspective. But we need to know that we're getting these ideas and perspective and foods from people that we know that we can trust and rely on because they've been vetted and they've proved that they're worthy of living amongst us. We need to know that they're civilized human beings. But until that day happens, a change needs to happen, but we're never gonna make a change by behaving like knuckle dragging idiots. We need to galvanize the masses in their numbers and be peaceful and articulate and calm in what we stand for. Because at the moment, it's the working class that are being avoided by the left and figures on the right. No one's taken them into consideration. So they're gonna be frustrated. So that would, be, that, would, that would sort of be my final message to anybody that wants to, make, that wants to make a change that's scared for their children's and grandchildren's future and the preservation of the country and our culture. I mean, patience is no longer a virtue. You can't just sit back and think, okay, it, it'll, it'll all work itself out because it won't work itself out and there's, there, there, there's a plan bigger than us. But still don't be afraid to speak out about it, but just don't, don't speak out it. Don't speak out about it with any kind of incitement. Just raise your concerns, articulate yourself, try and make sense of what it is you're trying to say and then say it and then stand tall and then gather in your numbers and say, we are not happy.